Today we're going to be looking at importing different files into our CAD software. And just to show you what different formats we have, we'll look underneath Help and Help Contents. Down here towards the bottom is the glossary, frequently asked questions, shortcut keys. Nice bunch of useful information down here. But what we have under frequently asked questions are the three different types of files we're going to look at today for importing. Vectors, images, and even 3D models. So right here in the help contents this shows underneath vectors different file formats that will be allowed to bring brought in for vectors which we will bring in something from say an AutoCAD bring it into our Vectric software and what we need to do to make sure it comes out to be joined not duplicated and ready to be toolpath we'll also look at images that we can bring in um, we want to make sure these are royalty free clip arts and what we'll do is bring these in they need to be traced cleaned up node edited and ready to be toolpath. And finally we'll look at using both Partworks 3D and Aspire to bring in different 3D models and what we need to do to orient them, size them, and give them a 3D toolpath. What we're going to look at here first is importing vectors. So I've created a simple job setup of a 48 inch wide by 24 inch piece and the magazine rack that we'll be using in this example was designed in a nether CAD program. And you've got different options of importing, file, import, you have the icon here, import vectors from a file. And as long as it meets one of the uh, prefixes that were shown in the help contents, I go up here and I find the magazine rack.dxf. And this is something that commonly happens when it's brought in from a previous software. Things aren't always joined. Sometimes things are duplicated. and It's not always centered. So I'm going to just walk you through sometimes what you would see in a straight import of a DXF. So I first of all I click open and right now I don't see anything happening. Now that doesn't mean that something was not imported someplace. What that means is it just wasn't imported at R00 in our software. It could have been drawn in a different origin. So if I zoom out real quick I do see that in this upper left corner here, out in negative x and negative y, positive y, um, that there's that magazine rack. It's not always that easy to trace. So in that example, what I'll do here is just I'm going to zoom back in. And what you can always do is you can right click, go select all vectors. That way everything is selected. And you can either use the shortcut key that you saw in help contents about center objects, which is your F9 or come down here to align objects and material and that will find wherever they are that way you don't have to scroll all the way out and go for a little search and rescue mission you can always just F9 to bring it right in there and, and, and zoom right into your full screen so now that we have the vectors inside of our work surface the things we need to look for are openings and duplicates of each other which will lead us into issues when we get into tool pathing so as I start selecting and looking into this I'm seeing that when I select these pieces they're not all joined together uh, so what's going to happen when I go to try to toolpath a profile around this it's going to error me out and it's not going to be able to make the cut that I need I also look here under these uh, decorative um, flutes and I can see that it's not that pink dashed line when I click over that I see that there's more of a darker line meaning there's a vector on top of a vector so a couple quick ways of cleaning this file up is, is real easy by first of all <clears throat> right clicking and saying select all duplicate vectors which will select all the duplicates sorry select all duplicate vectors and when I hit delete it gets rid of those and if you didn't see that what I'll do is I'll hit edit undo so I've got the duplicate vectors selected select all duplicate vectors and if I just scroll down here with my arrow keys you're gonna see all of those had d vectors behind them you couldn't see them unless you zoomed where it in and saw that it wasn't that clear pink dash line so I'm just gonna hit delete and get rid of those there's no sense of having the duplicate vector there and toolpathing it twice the other issue we have with this import is again we are an open vector here so I can do a sweep select or I can right click and select all open vectors and as you see it selects everything on the screen that meaning there's something open in every single one of these by here hitting the J command on the keyboard or looking underneath the join open vectors I see that 
being brought in this raw vector DXF, I have brought in zero closed and 110 open vectors. But if I hit this join command with a small tolerance of 0.004, it will close eight of these and leave 18 open. And with that tight tolerance like that, that's keeping these corners tight versus moving them or extending or not being able to make that gap. So <clears throat> by clicking on this here, I'm going to hit join. And as it clearly stated, I had now have eight open and eight, I'm sorry, eight closed and 18 open where these are now closed. As I count, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight profile parts, and the 18 open would be the decorative flutes that are going on here in the in the um, panels of the magazine rack. So this is good. Sometimes you're not always going to get the full full proper close. Maybe if this was saying it was still open, that's where you'd want to go into node editing and look for where the start point is and zoom in, see what's going on, see if it's connected, see if there's an overlap. A lot of the times it's easier just to go back to whatever software was designed in and have it fixed right there. But always check when you're importing for duplicate vectors and open vectors. These are things you want to take care of right during the import before you get over here into the tool paths and start coming up with an issues. And more than likely you'll get an error message or when you do your 3D view you'll see these issues. The next one we'll look at importing is images, and again I'm here in the help help contents just so you can see the different types of file formats that will allow you to be bringing in. So I'm going to close this out. I've just got a simple job set up here, a little 7 by 7 inch uh, job size. And again, file import is an option, or here if I hover over the folders I find it import bitmap for tracing. And as you see, when I click on this, it gives me the file types that we just saw in the help contents. I have one here, it's a uh, PNG file, and notice that it doesn't have the highest resolution on this. The higher the resolution you can bring in, the better. But for this example, <clears throat> all I'm going to do is bring this guy in. I've got him centered, I'll slightly resize him. And when you bring in these type of f formats, import bitmaps, you need to then vectorize these. These simply cannot be read by anything over here in our tool paths at this at this point. And what you need to do underneath the create vectors is come down here to trace bitmap. Fit vectors to selected bitmap. Click on this, and this allows you to type of tracing using with either color or black and white. I'm simply going to just accept all default settings and preview this so you can see it. If this is something you're going to get into and in doing a lot of with the importing, I'd recommend you watch both the Vectrix tutorial on this and as well as the one we have on our ShopBot website for importing different types of bitmaps and getting a little bit more into cleaning them up and uh, fitting them more. But I'm just going to preview to show you that that put a vector around that, which I can apply and close. And notice I've vectorized my JPEG. And I don't want to delete this JPEG because I may not. I may want to use it a little bit later, bring it back up. So underneath the layers option, I'm simply just going to turn the light off on that layer. And it's there for later on. I can turn it back on. But right now I'm going to turn it off and work with layer one. And then I have now vectorized my musical note. And I could proceed with finishing my project or if I was ready to toolpath, take it over to the toolpath side. Here we are gone through a Partworks 3D model. To use this program, watch one of the tutorials on Partworks 3D, and you'll see how to get through all seven steps. But now we're here to show you to simply import this. Um, here for this horse head, we have a roughing and a finishing toolpath. By just hitting save right now, I'm just going to be saving those to a post-processed SBP, a ShopBot file. What we want to do is save this so we can incorporate it into our VCarve Pro of our two-dimensional drawing. So I need to actually do a file and I'm going to do a save as and in my 3D folder here I will call this horse head and I'm going to call that six inch because that's the size that I made this when I created the file. That way it's just a friendly reminder how big this one is and I'll hit save that. What we're going to do next is bring that horse head into our VCarve Pro, and this is the project we'll look at here. This would be a two-stepper 
uh, help you get reach higher kitchen cabinets. And as neat as the project it is, how would it look if we were to add the 3D carving to the sides of the panel? So in doing so, here is the VCarve profile. And again, when I've done this work in Partworks 3D and I come over here and I do an import, um, what I'm looking for is the horse head that we just did and it saves it right here as horse head 6 inch and when I bring that in again I can go through the process that I looked for earlier for as fine as finding the objects and moving them when you're using Partworks 3D to bring in it's going to only bring in the silhouette here and it's going to allow you to move this around you're not able to resize this and you're not able to rotate this you're able to uh, put this where you need. If I needed to put one up here, I cannot copy and paste this, and like I just said, I cannot rotate it either. I would have to go back to the Partworks 3D. I would need to create one having it positioned differently, and I'd actually have to come over here and I'd have to import a second 3D file. Because when you bring in from Partworks 3D to VCarve, you're bringing not so much this is just for you to visually see. But you've already brought in a predetermined roughing toolpath and finishing toolpath that was all created. So for the convenience portion, it's not there using VCarve and Partworks as a combination. I'll do the same thing in Aspire next and show you how you can import directly into Aspire without having a middle program. Here we are looking at the same two-stepper as before, but this time we've opened up a copy of Aspire. So I could come down here to the clip art function, find that horse head that I'd used from before, and I can drag and drop it. Now with Aspire, you have all the capabilities of doing this 3D manipulating and editing. But for the purpose of this training, we're just doing importing of this, letting you know, see that you can easily change the size, position it how you want. You can easily copy and duplicate these, having multiple models. I can move it where I want, need to move it and position it and I'm able to come back to modeling I can put the trace around the line and then I'm able to just move over here to the toolpath side and create my roughing and finishing toolpath so it's a lot more direct of an import when you're sticking and doing it all with Aspire and it's a lot easier to manipulate the models for moving around and then again for editing the models The final importing I want to show you is using the DXF BAT processor, which is a gadget. So I haven't even created a new file yet. I'm just going to go straight to the gadgets, go to the DXF batch processor, find the batch or group of DXF files I want to import directly in. I can set up how I want to see these on here. I got 20 rows along, distance between, say I wanted to have 5 inches in between each of these just to keep them separate from each other. I can set up my drawing size right here. There's my table size, 96 by 48, my material thickness, where I want my XY drawing position, and where I want to zero the Z. And when I hit OK, no job loaded creating a default job, or I could have had the job created, which I didn't. So, uh, boom, bring that in. It says it brought in 51 different DXF files brought in. So I accept OK. So here are a bunch of different types of CNC joints, and it brought all of these in. But this goes all the way back to step one, to when we first started this session. Here's our white box. If we look up the job setup, we're 96 by 48. There's 4 foot by 8 foot. So these DXFs have been brought in at a lot larger scale. So this is where you would need to scale them here to set the size of the material this is where you'd have to go in and check for the open vectors or the duplicate vectors as this is quite a large uh, batch of DXFs to bring in but that shows you where all the things from before in this video can all come into play to help you make this fit and work for your shop bot